Nothing but mammals, so let's do it like they do on a footy fetish channel. <laughs> and in case you're wondering, folks, we do have a channel. Check us out on YouTube, oh. Footy Fetish Channel. Yes, sir. If you haven't, you can check out a lot of Bourbon Street knowledge, uh, soccer knowledge. It's a great time. Great as time. Well, as well as the lack of knowledge from people in New Orleans yes. about soccer. It's pre-COVID times, too, Sheesh. when we could actually go to Bourbon Street yeah, and we and could actually do these things. And be near people without a social distance. Yes. R.I.P. It's coming back soon, though. It'll be back. It'll be back. It'll be back. Yeah. We With that being g- said, we gotta get that going again. We gotta get that going again. Uh, well, we actually have some more. We need to. God, you're we need right. To, we man. keep going. We keep talking about going through. We have more footage that we, we need do. to actually. We do. Go through. Take a look at it. See if we yeah. need some editing. That's right. Get get it all beautiful. I've been slacking because I keep talking about it and we just don't do it. Yeah. But Same here. It's me too, man. Oh, we'll we'll get on it. We'll go. We'll holler at Felipe. Felipe can hook us up with some videos. Oh man, we'll give him the the content. He'll make it. He'll be doing it with his shirt off, eating a bowl of acai, <laughs> <laughs> looking at looking in the corner, right? Yeah. He's been having some great photos lately, folks. Yeah, man. It's our our, our main man who's been on the episodes a couple times here on the Footy Fetish Show. Uh, he he's always got the model pictures. You should go check out his Insta. It's yeah, great. He, he keeps uh, he keeps himself fit. That's for sure. He's a, he, he thinks he's the Brazilian David Beckham. I'll tell you what, man. He's still working to get that scholarship in Canada. He's still getting there. For, they oh. had to push it back till January. So, oh shit. He's very much focused. That's why he's. Uh, been, yeah. yeah, he's he's shredded right now. He he does uh, trainings every day. Um, I can see the, the twinkle in his eye. Yeah, he's man. He's, he's motivated. He's very motivated. Very excited for him to to make it here. We gotta get him back on the show. He'll be back. Speaking of the show. It's been a while. It's been a while. We always say it's been a while, but it really has been a this while has this been time. A while. The last time we posted an episode was the 1st of September. Yeah, man. It, which, honestly, there hasn't been too much that's happened other than transfers, oh, right. which we're jumping into today for sure. That's right. This is, ladies and gents, our transfer episode. Even though the transfer window is still open, we're going to go through some big names going big oh, places. Oh, man. This is a fun, fun, fun transfer window. I'm doing big things. Before we get into this episode, yes. don't you think this episode would be fun if we invited someone on? We need somebody from another continent. I think that to, to give us their their perspective. Yeah, absolutely. What if we What if we got in one of our old guests? Maybe Ghana Joe. Yes, Ghana Joe. Are you there? How you been? Yeah, man, I'm good. How about you? Oh, Ghana Joe, it's good to hear your voice, man. Glad to have you back on the podcast with us. The last time yeah. we spoke, um, on the podcast, I mean, Ghana. So for those listening, Ghana Joe and I are huge AC Milan fans. We speak probably daily about the transfer windows and just anything AC Milan. But the last time Ghana Joe was on our podcast was it, was it the AC Milan episode? I think so. Yeah, yeah I, think I think so. so. Was it yeah. May? It could have been April or May. Been. Yeah, it was. Uh, it was during yeah. COVID times. Yeah, we were we were knocking out those. Um, what's up? No, it, no, go ahead. We were just saying we were knocking out the teams, the legendary teams that were not in Champions League. So we did Roma, Arsenal, Milan. Yep. Uh, we did a Man U. <laughs> that was a fun one. <laughs> that was a really fun one. Uh, but no, Joe, yeah. how you been, man? What's been going on in uh, in your neck of the woods? How's Ghana doing? Man, everything is okay. Um, it's been good. Um, I think everything has is, is been back to normal here. Um, there's there's nothing like any lockdown at the moment. Um, I think all the restrictions has been lifted from here. Y'all have um, y'all's restrictions lifted in Ghana. Yeah, yeah. Wow. <laughs> all right. Well, so we're not. It, it seems <laughs> like we are more COVID free. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Is everybody wearing masks over there, or can you? You, can, um, yeah, you don't have you, to wear masks. You have to, you have to go out in your max, um, and you also have to keep the social distance. But then everything is back to normal. That's good to hear, man. It's good to hear. Yeah, yeah. we, uh, our mayor, the mayor of our city, idiot. <laughs> so, in in we have a uh, the state of Louisiana, 
and the state mm-hmm. is run by a governor, and then the city inside the state is run by a mayor. And the oh, okay. governor came out in the media and said, we're going to go to phase two, which is a big deal. And the mayor of our city said, nope, we're staying in phase three, or whatever it is. We're, no, we're staying in phase two. Um, and, and it's like, what the, the governor just said that everyone can go to phase three. And she's like, I said what I said. We're staying in phase two. And it's like, what? what are you, what's going on? So She got herself a little little attitude. Oh, I'll send you the video, Joe. She had an attitude. It her was, head uh, never stays still. <laughs> okay, then I'll check it out right now. <laughs> what, what, do you, what do you guys call that in uh, Ghana? We call it a bitch. Um, <laughs> <here in the US. laughs> Man, I'm not going to say anything right now. <laughs> <laughs> Latoya's gonna come after Ghana Joe for saying yeah, things. Seriously. Oh man. Joe, yeah, before so... we get in this episode, okay. we gotta we gotta talk some AC Milan. I got you on the podcast. Two questions, two big questions. What are your thoughts on the signing of Sandro Tonali? Which we'll get into at the end of the episode, but I wanna get your thoughts to start the episode. What are your thoughts on on Sandro? Um Honestly, I think it's a it's a pretty good signing. I've never seen AC Milan fans um, very happy about a signing in a very long time. Um, it seems this one everybody agrees um, that the management got it spot on, and the fact that Milan was competing with Inter, and then um, Milan was able to pull off the deal. So it looks like everybody's happy. I'm really really excited myself. Um, yeah, it's a pretty much good signing, and uh, we are looking forward to. I think um, the whole of last season, um, Milan was struggling a little bit um, early in the season. It was struggling a little bit um, in the midfield, and then having Tonali now is much more of a boost, and it's really going to be a plus. So I'm Agreed. Really happy about that signing, and he's very young too. So yeah, it means um, definitely he's a signing for the future as well, and it fits our current philosophy, which is very good. Sign the young players, you know, um, and it's cheap too. I yeah, think we got him for 20, 25 million, if I'm right. That's right. That's yeah, right. Exactly. Ten. And then we ask ten now. Comments, so yeah, it's, it's a really good signing. I'm really I really, yeah, I really like that he he has been talking about how this has been his boyhood club. They actually, I don't know if you saw this, mm. uh, he wrote a letter to Santa uh, asking, hey, Santa, uh, for Christmas, can you give me a, uh, a full AC Milan kit, uh, the jersey, the shorts, and the socks? Also... Can you get my uncle an inter kit? It can be fake. It doesn't have to be real. <laughs> and then he said at the end of it, he said, can you answer one question? Will I be a professional soccer? Like, or will I play for Milan in the future? Mm-hmm. That kind of thing. So AC Milan has loved the fact that he kind of like wished this into existence, you know, and it's this whole yeah. idea for the younger generation. Like Pretty cool. when you, when you want something badly enough and you manifest it, you know, if you work hard enough, it'll come true. And we're seeing it happen. You know, he's he's been a fan of Gattuso and Pirlo since he was a little kid. He actually asked Gattuso, Gattuso, can I have your number? And Gattuso was like, yeah, dude, you didn't need to ask me. He's like, but funny enough, I actually asked the guy before me before if me. I could have his number as well. So it's it's interesting that Gattuso asked the player before him, and then without Tonali knowing, he did the same thing to Gattuso. That's pretty, yeah. Uh, so it's really Sweet. great. Uh, yeah. My second question, Joe, is where do you put him in the starting 11 for the game tomorrow? Do you start him or do you have him on the bench and roll him in? Um, I think he was, he need to start from the bench. Um, he needs to Agreed. Okay. Um, be on the bench. You know, um, before, sorry, that's um, pushed lockdown. I think Milan did really great with um, Vanessa and Cassie in the middle um, with two, two central midfielders role. I think we, we did pretty well. So I don't think um, Pioli needs to change a lot at the moment. You know, just 
just introducing um, Tonali in gradually, and then let's see how everything everything is going to turn out. Um, it's a pretty long season, so you don't want to rush it. It's a new sign. And he needs to earn a spot, just like any other player, you know. He's a new arrival. He needs to put on a good show, better than what we saw from Cassie and Vanessa. And then maybe we can we can all agree that hey, Tonali, now you you own a spot now in the starting eleven. So um, you are there on merit, not because you just. We just got you signed, so it means we have to study right away. Agreed. Follow-up question. Do you let him play the last 10, 20 minutes tomorrow? Yeah. I think um, okay. awesome. 20 minutes, so- that's, that's even not enough. I think he should, he should be brought no. in right on the second half, you know, Maybe for Benassar or Kessie or anybody, you know, let's let's see him. Um, he played in top flight football in Syria, so I don't think he really needs a lot a lot of um, um, experience when it comes to playing top flight football. He's he has already been there, so hey, just introduce him. In. Is a friendly, so yeah, you can just try him out. And then let's see how, how how everything goes. Great, yeah, I agree. I agree. Awesome. Okay. Well, we didn't uh, we didn't invite you on the show to just talk about Milan as much as I would love to keep talking about him. We got some some more global soccer to talk about. Booty, why don't you take us away? Thank you, sir. I very much appreciate that. <laughs> and, and also the the friendly that these guys are speaking of, uh, that's going to be against Brescia tomorrow. That's right. Uh, just in case you guys are wondering, lots of friendlies going on right now. Uh, there also, in case you guys haven't seen it, there is some Nations League going on. There has been a couple of games that were pretty exciting, some not so exciting. But in the, me- the midst of all that, before all that started, we had something we haven't got a chance to talk about That's yet. Right. The Community Shield. Yeah. A, a one-to-one draw that ended in penalties to the Gunners for the win. So we got some friends out there, our Gunner friends. Shout out to you. Hell of a time. It's always fun to beat Klopp, right? Um, not to mention now that they've beat him twice in, what, two months? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's, been, uh, it's been exciting to see Arsenal completely flip the flip script. The flop. Just do a flippity flop. They've now got two titles. Yeah. They won the FA Cup and the Community and Shield. Community Shield now. Um, and you're sitting there going, but they're still in eighth place. You know, they finished EPL in eighth place, but they go on to, I think they beat Chelsea? Yeah. Was it Chelsea, Man City? It was It was Liverpool, Man City. Man Liverpool, City. yeah, Liverpool wasn't in the FA Cup. Liverpool they just was beat just in the league. The league. Yeah. And it was Man City and then Chelsea. Chelsea. And then Liverpool in the Community Shield. Mm-hmm. So... I mean, when you're playing for titles, it's hard to it's hard to say, oh, this title isn't as big as the Champions League. While that is true, all the players on the field are playing for the win. Mm-hmm. You're playing to get the, the title, to add it to your trophy case. So it makes you wonder. It makes you wonder. It makes you wonder what's going on there. Um, Definitely look like a completely different team than we've seen oh, yeah. uh, the past couple of years from Arsenal. So that's going to be really fun. And we're going to get to, in a few minutes, a couple moves they've already made. Yeah. A couple of them kind of under the radar, uh, and a couple guys they've shipped out. That's right. So I will say, with the Community Shield, when we look at the starting rosters for both Arsenal and Liverpool, Arsenal came out with their, their number one squad, A1, top 11. Meanwhile, Liverpool did not. So when we look at Liverpool's... Lineup, they had Joe Gomez and Fabinho in their back line. Andy Robertson was on the left back. Van Dyke was a center back. And then you had Fabinho right next to Van Dyke, which is a pretty strange move. Yeah, Kind of taking a, a page out of Pep Guardiola's playbook, taking a center defensive mid, dropping in the back line. So when you look at it, it wasn't the strongest Liverpool lineup. Minamino was playing as a center attacking mid. And they also didn't come out when the, in their 4-3-3 traditional lineup. Um, so... Um, interesting, interesting take there with, uh, with what Klopp was doing, but, uh, a one, one game, nonetheless, the, uh, the Obama, Obama goal was 
was a fucking pretty as usual. It was a it was a beaut. Yeah. Um, I think the player's name was Saka. I think Saka switched the field to Obama Yang. It was wide open. He took one touch in and just buried it. It was uh, it was beautiful. Um, but yeah, so Arsenal winning the Community Shield, starting the the EPL off hot, which we kind of got to talk about. That starts back up this weekend. Yep. Um, this is hot and fast. Everything's kicking back up immediately. Arsenal will be playing Fulham, who was just promoted to the uh, promoted again. They were promoted, relegated, promoted in the last two to three years. So <laughs> they've been on a uh, a war path. That's a that's a big game for them. That's a hundred million dollars that they get to spend inside their club, bringing in players, making improvements. So. Uh, That'll be interesting to see how they hang with Arsenal, who's just full of confidence right now. Did you get to see any of that, uh, Ghana Joe? Did you see that game? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I watched that game from the second half, and um, uh, honestly, I was really impressed by what Arsenal, Arsenal was doing. Um, Liverpool, I think, um, just like you said, they were not really, um, you know, playing with their full squad. Uh, so that gave us now a little bit of an urge over them. Um, us now really played well. But then I, still, I was very surprised they won the game because I thought probably um, us now would just be doing attacks. Maybe they would just <laughs> play well, no good, you know, but then they would just lose the game probably in the in the dying minutes, but then this time around, it was different. Um, when I saw um, you know, it you know, collapsed, I was like, man, it's over for us now, but then at least they were able to, and, you know, win the game. <laughs> yeah, that's right, and thankfully Obama Yang didn't drop the trophy this time. Um, <laughs> exactly, <after> man. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, he he was able to put away the goal that they gave him. They gave him that one. But you you know I, I, when I was when I was watching the second you know that was like um, during the spot really angry at um, Arsenal. I don't know why people or um, players will always keep or will will try and keep the best player, the best penalty kick player. For the last kick, man. What if it never gets to his turn? That's right. That's right. But the counter argument is always if the other team makes a goal for goal, don't you want your best kicker at the end to finish strong? I'm not saying that's right, but. I, 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 if I was, a, I don't know, but then I'll always Rex playing the this, or the good um, ones that I think um, that are good at the spot kids. I'll always start with them, you know, get the other players' confidence up high, you know. The last kick can be played by anybody. That's what I think. Because um, we've seen good players still yeah, miss them. That's fair. So if I have the best players, I think we are going to start, you know, give the young players, you know, that kind of confidence that, hey, um, we are leading, so we need to just put this one in. Rather than just waiting, you start with the weak lanes and then you wait for the good player to have the last the last kick. Man, that's that's really risky. Honestly, I really think it's risky. That's true. I ever saw um I ever saw Ronaldo waiting for that kick for I think that was Madrid. Um I want to remember that match. I think he waited and it never got to his turn. So you know, you can't you can't always put your hopes on that that you want your best kicker to be the last the last kick. I agree. I it's like a Copa Italia speaker in Ronaldo. Remember, sorry, tried to save him for last. That's that's what it was. Yeah, uh, yeah. Was, I, think it's, it. yeah I think it's the Copa Italia. That's yeah. right. I remember that. I remember Ronaldo not shooting. Yeah. I think I saw I saw one at, at Real Madrid. I think you're right. I just want to record it now. Yeah. Because mm-hmm. yeah. there's. So if you have the best players, why don't you start them right away? Let them have the best kicks, you know, get everybody confidence high, you know. At least it's better that way than, you know, starting with um, somebody like, um, who was it? I think I saw 
Um, was it Saka or something? For Arsenal, I think somebody oh, was also in, was, uh, was in the penalty. You had penalty. Nelson, Maitland, Niles, Suarez, David Luiz, Obama Yang. That's risky. Exactly. I think um, it's very risky. You know, David Luiz is good. So at least it's good that he starts early. So you have Obama Yang, you know, have, have the first penalty kick. Man, I'm not going to wait until it's the final penalty kick. That's true. Each coach has got their different philosophy. I uh, personally, when I've... Yeah, exactly, exactly. Well, it worked for them, so you can't really compete. That's right, that's yeah. right, that's right. I personally, uh, I, I, what I do is I ask the players who wants to go first, and usually there's a player that'll, like, step up. And for me, when I see a player with confidence, I'm like, good, go, you're first. Um, and the players that are, like, semi-confident, I put them in the middle, uh, and then hopefully with a, a strong, confident player at the end. So I usually start confident and confident and then kind of mix in the I'm nervous, but I'll take a, pi- a kick for you, that kind of thing. So, um, hey, it paid off for, for Arteta. Yeah. So congrats to him. Yeah, I, th- I think so. Congrats to him. That was a, that was a fun game. Uh, um, I'm really interested to see what they do in this upcoming year because they've been rolling out with a 3 4 3. Uh, for quite a while now. Uh, so it makes you wonder. And they just signed a center back from, I want to say, Lille, Gabriel Magalhaes. I think we're going to talk about him in a second. Um, okay. So that's uh, that's an exciting player. If he's there, does that mean they go to a four-man back? They've got phenomenal outside backs. And Maitland Niles, Bellerin, Saka can play. I believe Tyranny can play as an outside winger. So they've got the players for a four-man back line, but I'm really excited to see what Arteta uh, decides to do with the, the group of players he has. That's going to be a lot of fun. It's interesting you mention uh, Bellerin because I'm not sure if you remember or not, but he's been on the move, yeah. in quotes, for a couple of years now. So maybe if he ends up going somewhere, they bring, you know, they got Gabriel now. Right. So yeah. maybe they stick with the 3-4-3 if, they, if he ends up leaving. But mm. We'll see. Just throwing a hot take out there. Yeah. Hot see take. I, see if hot anybody take. catch it. You know? <laughs> see if anybody catches it. <laughs> Before we move on from this game, yeah. speaking of Arsenal, we got some Arsenal gear to give away. Oh, that's right. Oh, my. Oh, We're going to actually take a screenshot here. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Ooh, do you want to hold this up for me? I want to hold it. I'm going to put my hands all over it. Unfortunately, the photo is uh, – hold on. Let me get this. That's sexy, too. I'm going to set this up. We're just going to do a quick screenshot here. All right, Ghana Joe, on the count of three, just give us a smile. Ready, here we go. Three, two, one. All right, now no smile. Just, uh, like, give a a no-teeth smile, just like a grin. How about a... Ready? Three, two, one. Awesome. Okay, so we've got uh, we got quite a few people that we got to pick out of this hat here. We had people from Twitter. Woo. We had people from Instagram, Facebook. It's getting to the point now where it's really hard for us to thank everybody, but we are looking at everybody. Booty's got the, the names in the hat right now. We're going we're gonna to draw for a second. So, Booty, get your hand in there. Let's pick out a... Uh, let's All pick right. out a name. Booty always seems to give it to the right person here. Let's see. All right, and the winner is. Oh, it looks like one of our Twitter followers. We got Gunner Mike. Mike Malone is the oh winner. Oh my the God, jersey. Gunner Mike! Look at Can that. you believe it? Look at that! The Gunner winning the Gunner jersey. The Gunner Gunner who would have imagined? <laughs> and for those out there who are listening, this is our Black Lives Matter jersey. We uh, we want to continue to have this discussion be relevant and not just disappear in the media. So we will be giving another Black Lives Matter jersey away. It's actually an AC Milan jersey, so Joe, get your name ready, man. You might be able to win one of those. Um, uh-huh. I've, got a, I've got quite a few friends in New Orleans that have seen the jersey and have offered to buy it from me. And I said, hey, it's for the podcast, so just put your name in the hat and maybe you'll win. But uh, congrats to uh, Gunner Mike winning the win- – winning. this is a third kit, by the way. This is the navy blue and yellow so uh, it's fresh. Excited to give him to him. He'll be in New Orleans for a wedding soon enough, and I'll hand it to him and get some photos. And we will post that to the sites. We'll yes, post sir. it to Insta, Facebook, Twitter <laughs> for the twatters. 
Yo, thank you guys, everybody that joined. Yeah. And put your name in the hat. We will be doing more as always. I can tell you what. Our next jersey, hate to keep it on the Arsenal theme, but Mm -hmm. as soon as Obama Yang signs that deal, we're giving away an Obama Yang jersey. We're going to give it away. We're going to make that the next jersey giveaway. We've been on much kind of an Arsenal theme. I think Booty and I are Mm -hmm. uh, we're on Team Arsenal for the EPL. We're uh, I want to see it happen. Do you think they'll finish top four next season? Ooh, that's tough. Can I say top five? Europa, top five? I'll go top five. Okay, Joe, what do you think? Top four for top four finish for Arsenal? Is is really going to be difficult. <laughs> I don't think so. You don't so. think so? What about top five? No, I don't think so. I still don't oh, think so. six? Um probably <laughs> seven. <laughs> That's my guess. Bumping yeah. up one. I think that would be the that, that would be we the gotta best. we gotta put the sound bite on the, the Instagram. <laughs> no, because I, I have to also consider the other teams, you know. True. Um, I was looking at the transfer market for you know Chelsea. You know, definitely my city is going to be going to be up there. You can take Liverpool out. Um now United is also trying yep. to put things together and then things Looks like it's working for them, you know. Rashford, Greenwood, Marshall, you know, just push lockdown. I think things really look good for them. They were really, they were really playing some good football. So definitely, they are going to be up there. Uh, that's why I don't want to put Arsenal in the top. Yeah, board, and you, you can't know? forget Chelsea had some great signings, yeah. you know. So yeah. And- and then fifth, probably, Marino will still be there. <laughs> <laughs> I think so. I'll still put Tony on my hand about So probably Arsenal will get sixth, seventh, or probably they will maintain the height. I haven't heard you mention Leicester or Wolves. I was about to say, Wolves didn't really get rid of anybody. Yeah, I was, I was, about, I was about to uh, mention Leicester because, um, you know, I was looking at the bookmakers um, tip for the, um, how do they call it, the Gold Can Award, and I think um, they are tipping Vardy and Aubameyang yep. to yep. one of them should probably be the Gold Can or probably win the Golden Boot in England. Yeah, so, I would agree. Um, I think yeah. definitely Leicester will be there. I would agree. But then Arsenal, Aubameyang is definitely going to score. A lot from spot kicks, so I don't really, I don't really think the whole team is is going to be able to drag the whole team along into the top five or probably top wow. six. I'm going to put him in the top four. I'm going to just right. go ahead and say that. I All think right. Arteta, I don't think he's done in the transfer window. I think they're going to sign another player or two that's really going to help them next season. And put it on the board. Well, thank God it's a podcast, so everything is yeah, recorded. No. You know, you're going to play this. I tell you. <laughs> I tell you what, Joe, we're actually going to start recording. We're going to start writing down our predictions on a board. I'm going to show you the board. He does quick. have a board that's already been I got that's already started up. Okay. See up here? Yeah. So yeah. we're, yeah, we're going to start that. writing them down because uh, i got to keep myself honest, man. I've been, I've been giving out a lot of hot takes and uh, haven't really followed through on any of them. So. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we're going to start doing that. But speaking of transfers... Did, has there been any transfers There's, lately? It's been a couple. There's been a couple. Shh, more like twelve or twenty. <laughs> I just want to say, poor. Yeah, before we get into that, man, it's just <laughs> poor Arsenal. If they, we should we check on them and see if they they need some help? Because I mean, they were trying to climb out, and then Ghana Joe just bitch slapped them. Back, oh man, back in the seventh place, yeah. baby. <laughs> Arsenal, it's okay. I'm on your side. It's all right, Arsenal. We'll we'll try and stop the bleeding with some transfers. <laughs> So, first of all, we should jump into the one we already mentioned, right? Mm-hmm. Sandra Sonali. For y'all that don't know, this dude was at Brescia. He was a pimp at Brescia. He's a youngin too. Lots yeah. of growing to do. 20. So, he's, might be a reason you haven't heard of him. If you haven't, get your YouTube on. Uh, great player. I definitely noticed him the the one game that we played him, or maybe it was like the f- earlier in the year. Probably was. I think he, yeah, it was he's early. He's a spark plug for Brescia. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know what's cool is he reminds me of a combination of like Andrea Pirlo and Gattuso. Andrea Pirlo in that his ability to hit a long ball is incredible. 
but he's also extremely aggressive in the tackle. Mm-hmm. Uh, so it's kind of like a combo of Gattuso Pirlo, which is awesome. And how old is he? 20. 20. Born in 2000. Wow. Jeez. Um. Good God, dude. Ah, man. <laughs> <laughs> That's a cool birthday because every year in the 2000s is how old you are past your birthday. Yeah, it's yeah. true. So yeah. that'll be fun. But uh, that was a an interesting deal. Maldini, shout out to Maldini. He's been dropping his name at the end of episodes. I was just looking at he that. He has been working some magic for Milan. It's a $10 million loan fee with an option to buy for $15 million after that, plus 10 more, do- 10 more million in bonuses. So there's potential here for $35 million in total for, for Tonali. I have a feeling if we make Champions League and maybe win the Scudetto, that $10 million will come into play. But uh, right now, all we've only paid 10 mil for him. So both parties seem to be happy with how the deal has, has worked out. I, I know that this is actually really interesting, that Tonali's deal technically ends next summer. Mm. So imagine if he goes on loan to another club, and all of a sudden at the end of the year, we're like, eh, we don't want to buy him. Well, now he's a free agent at Brescia. Mm. We can pick him up on the free. So... I think one of the things that delayed this this transfer was the owner of Brescia was like, I want to sign him for another year just in case the loan deal doesn't work out. He doesn't go for free. Mm-hmm. So um, very glad that both parties were able to work this out. I've been talking about this guy since April. This is a talk. We've been talking about this player since April, and he's been tipped with Inter – and I've been dealing with so much shit from my friends who are Inter fans saying, we're going to get Tonali, ha, ha, ha. Well, <laughs> thank goodness Inter decided to kick rocks and give it and just let Milan sneak in. Maldini went in and was very professional, very, very quick with his, um, you know, his negotiations. And we locked him up. Number eight, AC Milan, Sandro Tonali, baby, let's go. You know a lot of the – I mean, if you got a young Italian guy – oh. It, it's gonna. He's gonna be linked to every Serie A team possible. That's why I'm like. It's true. I yeah. I, I'm like this with a lot of transfers. You can tell you. It's like, dude, just let me know when the ink dries. Yeah, that's right. That's like, there's right. just way too many. Like, that's right. That's today right. it's Inter. Tomorrow, I, it, he was linked with Juve for a yeah, minute. Yeah, he, he was. was he was linked with Juve. That's right. But cool to see him go to Milan. It's gonna be a really cool fit for him, yeah. especially such a young team already. Mm-hmm. So definitely be welcomed in. That'd be really fun. Another young guy we should talk about. <laughs> Free Kai. He's finally free. He's free. Free Kai, Kai Havertz, Havertz, ladies and gentlemen. Sorry, Mike. He didn't go to Arsenal. Didn't go to <laughs> Arsenal. <laughs> we've been asking. We've been talking about that. He went to time. another team. Yeah. Arsenal folks usually love this team. Chelsea. <laughs> uh, he's he's off to Chelsea for a price of eighty million. Eighty million. Eighty million. So Bayern Leverkusen. He's got some dough. They rolled in a dough. Sheesh. Chelsea, and that is that is a, a purchase as well. That's a buy. Yeah, that's a buy. He's there. So he's there. Uh, Kai, so if you haven't heard of this guy, if you're just getting into soccer, if you're just getting into some younger guys, this is a 21-year-old. He's been in German, Germany for a while. Uh, he is on the national team as we speak. I believe a couple uh, – this is recently He's he's been called up to the German national team. Um, other than that, he has been a boss for a couple of years running now, doing some work over at Leverkusen. Big reason why they were they were fourth in the Bundesliga this Where they year. They got to Champions League too. Big, yeah. yep. Big baller out in Champions League. The games that they that he did play for him. Um, so that's that's where I'm at of Kai. He's he's a, he's a joy to watch. It's gonna be really interesting to see if he fits in with all the other guys that they bought, which we're gonna get to momentarily here. Your thoughts, Gunner, or I almost called him Gunner Mike. Oh my god! No, dude, don't do that, I'm, dude. I'm, it's like in my mind now. <laughs> I'm talking way too much Gunner stuff. Uh, we've been on a Gunner kick too too long here. Yeah, we have. Gunner Joe, not Gunner Joe. Gunner <laughs> <laughs> Gunner Joe. What do you think, Kai Havers? You'd be a success at Chelsea. Um, um I really think. Um, they paid a lot for the transfer, eighty nine million. That's a lot. That's a lot. You know, eighty nine million dollars. <laughs> he's really it's expensive. It's a lot. Yeah, he's really expensive. I don't know, but then if young players are purchased sometimes with that kind of fee, it gives them that pressure to to perform. Yeah. And then if you don't take care of yeah. them, you might really get into their head and really unsettle them. 
then if he is going to keep on the same form and at least do the same thing he was doing in, in Leverkusen, I think that's really going to be a plus for, for Chelsea. But um, my worry at the moment for Chelsea is um, right now, I think I, there was a story that was that was like Miss Mount was actually also unsettled that the fact um, that they are bringing Harvest in. No, just throw him in there. there. I think last That's season, Mount played of most it. matches for Chelsea, Chelsea more than any other right. player. Almost 53 matches or so. So if he's going to have to um, compete with another attacking midfielder, you know, that's a huge blow to him as well. It means definitely he's not going to get the same amount of playing time. And then, really? I don't know, probably he's going, start... is going to also bring the best out of him, you know, since there's competition, probably Mount will also, will also put on a good show. But then, it's, a, it's still a plus for Chelsea. If you have two good attacking midfielders that at least you can count on, all season, I think is 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 a good sign. Champions League football, so I really think Alex should be able to to at least perform in Chelsea as well. It's extremely important. I really like the point you made about him actually keeping this up and keeping this this form that he's got going right now up and he's going to have to do it for the 80 million price tag. Um, the main question with that though is is he going to fit in with the others that they brought in? Yeah. Ben Chilwell for 58 mil. Leicester to from from Leicester, Leicester to Chelsea. Le- Leicester, Jesus. Uh yeah. Saar from from Nice to Chelsea on the free. On the free. Uh Thiago Silva from PSG on the free. So you can't you can't forget about Zayek or Ziyech. Ziyech. Yeah, yeah, Timo Ziyech. Werner mm-hmm. is also a brand new player. Uh you ha- you still have Christian Pulisic there. Giroud still there. So it makes you wonder. I like where you're going here. Where are all these players going to fit in? What is Frankie FIFA going to figure? What is he going to do? <laughs> what is Frankie FIFA? Gonna, we call Frank Lampard Frankie FIFA, by the way. I don't know if you knew that. <laughs> it seems like every every match he's got a different FIFA lineup out yeah, there. He, he's playing FIFA with his Chelsea team. That's all he's doing. It's like he <laughs> sometimes it works. Sometimes, sometimes it works. Done. Sometimes you get smacked seven to one Bayern yeah. Munich in a double leg. You know, so yeesh. Sometimes you you win four nothing, and sometimes you're playing Felipe, and you you, you, you lose four nothing. Yeah, <laughs> but yeah, it's gonna be really interesting to see if he can keep that up, and if he can. What is that? Five new guys we just named that are coming in yeah, all together. Five. If if you could put all these guys in there and make them all work, I mean, that's obviously the main goal here. So it's gonna have to also. Have to try it. Rumor has it that Conte is on his way to Inter for a swap with mm. what's his name, Christian Eriksen. Oh, okay, yeah, they've been trying to move him too. They're on the Conte is trying to get Conte. Yeah, wow. <laughs> yeah. fun to say. I like that. Yeah, Conte, that would <laughs> be scary. I, I, I like it if I'm an Inter fan. I don't like it if I'm an AC Milan fan. Yeah, because um, he is like two players on the on the field at the same time. <laughs> and Erickson so. sure hasn't done shit since he's been there. Yeah, so. Erickson has not been a threat at all, but. Conte, I don't want to play against him because he'll do a great job uh, in Syria. But Chelsea really uh, taking advantage of that transfer ban from last summer as well as their their uh, signing from Hazard or selling of Hazard. Yeah. So, um, I, th- you know, we've been talking about this in our group. We think this is why Chelsea have been able to spend so much money this window. It's because they didn't spend anything last window. The ban, and then yeah, the ban, the transfer ban, and then they also sold um, Eden Hazard. Oh yeah, as yeah. well as a few other players. Uh, we just saw Willian leave, so his wages are now gone. So they can now use that that cap space, for lack of a better term, to sign these younger players and get them on the books. Sure, um, because Hazard was what hundred mil, dude. Easy, yeah. easy hundred, yeah. easy hundred mil. And then you got to wonder what they bought him from. Or who they bought him from and how much and what was the difference there? Money, money, money. Sheesh. Money. I'm saying, bro. I'm saying. So Chelsea really making some moves in the transfer window, but. Speaking of money. Yeah. What else we got? What's up, man? You? Y'all been quiet. What y'all got? How about Donny Van de Beek? Well, let's, from Ajax. Let's talk about the failure to get Sancho. Yeah. That finally ended. <laughs> yeah. They finally for said. For now. Yeah, for now. <laughs> for now. So. The guy still hasn't said, I don't want to go there. True. <laughs> 
I so actually, that's the only thing. Yeah. It's gonna, it's gonna leave this right here. Well, people, it, people say, what's yeah. interesting about that Man U for Sancho move is that we now know how much Man U was willing to spend for one player. So everyone's like, yeah. okay, we know how much money you're willing to drop. They got ninety million to spend. Go. Let's go after <laughs> who's the player they just got. Donny Van de Beek. Donny Van de Beek. For my ex. Great player. I'm actually kind of shocked he hasn't moved sooner. Right. But cool move for them because, as we've always mentioned with Man U, if back in our Man U podcast and whenever they're brought up, you got to go get people who want to play for Man U. got to get people who want to bleed for him, and that is a guy who has been a Man U fan for his life. Really? Apparently. Yeah. No shit. When he was a kid. Uh, so this is a move he actually, if I'm not mistaken, he actually – uh, started reaching out to them. They started reaching out to him. No way. I was talking with his uh, – a lot of this uh, – if you go Google, his dad was a big influence. I'm not sure if he's his manager or not mm-hmm. – or, or agent, excuse me. Um, but it's good to see them getting people that they need to be getting younger and people who want to be there. I think that was Jose's problem, but that's a different episode that we got <laughs> into way back when. Yeah. Uh, your thoughts? What do, you, do you like Donnie? Uh, I do. He came from that Ajax team that really shocked the world during that Champions League. I think it was like two years ago. He was on that team with Matthias De Ligt and Frankie De Jong. Um, really, and Ziek and David Nerez and, you know, all those other cats. I can't remember all of them. Uh, Tagliafico, yeah. right, the left back. Just a phenomenal De Ajax team. De Ligt, De Ligt yeah. yeah. Um, so, I'm curious to see if he can hang in Man U. I, I'm thinking back to Josie Altador. When Josie Altador was in the Dutch League, the Eredivisie. He killed it. He had like 23 goals in the season, and an EPL team picked him up and immediately like just crushed him. Couldn't hang. It was uh, Either it was the weather or the, the competition or the physicality. Um, just couldn't hang. Just made an immediate 180 on his performance. I'm wondering if Van de Beek is going to do the same thing you're not with the big boys. You're not in the you're not in the little Dutch league where Ajax and uh, Feyenoord are finishing one and two every year. You're you're with a, a league that has got a new champion almost every year. We've seen it bounce between. Uh, as of last, we had Liverpool, we had Man City do it, we had mm-hmm. uh, Leicester, Chelsea. I mean, we've been seeing new winners in this league, so this is no joke. Not to mention. The middle of the pack in the EPL is always a very difficult game. Any any team in the middle of the pack. So I'm not sure. Joe, Ghana Joe, what is your thoughts on Donny Van de Beek to Man U? I think the first thing I saw um, um, when he joined was that um, I think um, he's he's married to Diddy's Beckham's daughter, right? He's married to David Beckham's daughter? What? Dennis, Dennis Beckham, Dennis. Oh, not David. Oh, Burkamp. I think the Dutch. Got it. The Dutch, Burkamp. Yeah, Got the Dutch old player. Got it. Former Arsenal Dutch player. We're gonna look this up. Damn, but, I was about to say I thought Beckham's daughter yeah, was like twelve. That's 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 what that's what I had, and then um, since United was, um, I think United was able to score. I think Arsenal like eighteen. So somebody said, okay, so. Van de Beek likes fucking ass now. <laughs> <laughs> but I, th- I really think it's a, it's a good sign. He's, he's really good. He's very good on the ball. And then with United, um, last season, apart from um, um, Pogba in the central part of the, of the midfield, I think they struggled a little bit. Um, Frank was very inconsistent. Um, Matic is is on is old now, so if you have him in there, I think it's really a plus. I think um, I don't. Uh, I, I had you say something about Arsenal. Yeah, why did you? Um, yeah. And then something about fiscality, but then that man is that man is fiscally fit. I don't think it was anything. It has anything to do about the strength, but then. Him probably got a little bit exposed. Um, Van de Beek, I'm really excited about him, honestly. I really want to see him start the season for United. I'm really, really, really excited about that side of signing for United. He should be able to to do well for them. That's what I'm thinking. We'll see. Uh, I know it's a crowded starting eleven because you've already got Bruno Fernandez, Pogba, and I think 
is it Matic who's playing? That Fred's been rotating in, maybe a little bit of Pereira. So I'm curious to see where Ole Gunner puts Van de Beek in that starting eleven. Should, yeah, should be interesting to see. Well, probably, um, I don't know. Um, maybe maintain because I, I think Pogba was not really having a good season um, by his standards. Let me right. Let me yeah. Put that. Yeah, by standards, I think he was not really having a good season. So maybe if you have him around, you know, the competition is going to be there. So probably he might step up and do something. Yeah, it'll definitely. He's gonna, you, it's going to put pressure on Pogba to perform. Yeah, I like exactly, that. Yeah, exactly. But then I think um, without without anybody, um, without um, the big around, you know, he will still feel free. Think there is no competition. You know, Fred is not a match. Um, Pereira, not any anybody to be concerned about. So, since the Dutchman is around. Let's see if probably he's going to put a little bit of pressure on him. And then even if um, the biggest on the bench, at least, Pogba or anybody that's going to play alongside Pogba will know that, hey, there is a Dutch talent out there, you know, you got to put on a good show. Interesting. Yeah, I agree. It's been a long time since we've seen a successful Dutch player at Man U. I can't think of the last one that I remember being there. Um, and he's certainly... I believe he started against Italy when uh, Italy played the, the Netherlands in this recent UEFA Nations game. I'm pretty mm-hmm. sure um, Van de Beek and Frankie de Jong were in the midfield with maybe Wijnaldum, which is a pretty solid midfield. Yeah. That's a solid midfield. Yeah, I'd have to say what it's been since. But they really had a poor game against Italy. Who's that? What? All of them. All of um, De Jong... The big, and then I think there was a tip um, player. They were all not good against Italy. Um, I don't know. They were mashed out by the Italian midfield. They they really didn't have a good game. Yeah, that's and I mean it finished one yeah. zero um, for Italy, which I don't know if you saw the goal, Barella, mm-hmm. whew, out of nowhere. Yeah, that was crazy. Mm-hmm. I saw that goal and was like, damn, you got up. <laughs> that was a really good goal. <laughs> Unfortunately, Zaniolo, we got to talk about Zaniolo real quick while we mention that. Unfortunately, he tore his other knee. He he tore his left knee. I believe it was his left knee back in January, December, January, and made an amazing comeback to almost be ready as if the Euros were going to be there this summer. The Euros get pushed back to next summer, and everyone's like, whew, okay. Gives him an entire another year to continue to grow his muscles back, get his strength and stamina and explosiveness. And then, unfortunately, he tears the ACL in his other knee. Well, um, luckily for him in the modern day of medicine, um, he's got a full year to recover. We just saw him do it in six to seven months. And uh, really interestingly enough, uh, Carlo Ancelotti, who is a longtime coach in Syria, currently at Everton, went and spoke to the media saying how you know, he believes Zaniolo will be fine and continue to be a world-class player. He might just have to move deeper in the formation and be a deeper-lying mid- midfielder. Uh, reason being is he actually tore both of his knees and was able to continue to play at a high level and eventually going to Milan and win a lot of awards. So um, that was really cool to hear about Zaniolo. Um, not Zaniolo, about yeah. Ancelotti. You know, giving a kind of a, a boost of confidence to Zaniolo after tearing his second ACL in in a year almost, and in, in just just under. I mean, it's it's unfortunate, but he's making a name for himself, though. Yeah, he is. I mean, at twenty years old, twenty twenty one years old, he's he's already pegged as one of the best Italian midfielders that uh, in the league right now. Joey, I'm getting uh, I'm getting a side eye from you about Zaniolo. What are your thoughts there? Um. He's, he's pretty young. It's very unfortunate. All these things are happening to him at this time, you know. And it looks like um, he was he was almost he was almost in good form before that the first one happened. Oh yeah, um, I think that was in January, right? Yeah, he was really enjoying. Uh, he was really having a good season before the first the first injury happened, and then he had to stay away. 
with COVID just came back and then there's a setback. He's supposed to return in February, right? And that's what I'm hearing. What's that? Say it again. I I, I think he's supposed to return in February. Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, I would I would give him yeah. about six to seven months from now. Yeah, let's just let's just be hopeful, man. Yeah, absolutely. Because um, if the injury starts happening at this very young age, man, if you don't take care, it's going to ruin your career. But then I'm I'm I'm, I'm I just want to keep my head up for Zanil because he has a lot of talent. I think. Yeah. I don't I don't want to see him, you know, just be like maybe Pato from AC Milan, you know. Right, just disappear. And then just, yeah. yeah, at least at least we need him fit. And then at least we can see where he can take his career to. Because he's really amazing. Italy is going to miss him. Roma is going to miss him. It's really going to be a big blow for Roma, honestly. Because I was going to say how McKinney's taken up. Yeah, so um, that's that's really cool. We're going to actually keep it, keep the topic in Syria ah here. Oh. We're going to go over to Juve, who have actually made a few moves and are on the verge of making another move as well. I'm pretty wet about this one. Not going to lie. I'm going to pass it to the Juve fan here. Not going to lie. I'm very, very, very aroused on this one. <laughs> Weston McKinney from Schalke to Juventus USA. on a loan USA. option to buy. USA. First American to ever wear the white and black stripes. Damn. Very excited about that. Wow. I was really hoping maybe it could be me, but <laughs> he beat me to it. You know? <laughs> so I, uh, I'll i give him cred. Good job, McKinney. Uh, officially my new favorite. Juventus player. Yeah, we're going to have to get you that jersey. Yeah, yeah i got to get the new one, the, the new stripes. Yeah, the new stripes. For sure. Uh, very excited to see him under Pirlo. Yeah, Whether he starts what? or not, I'm excited either way. I really kind of hope he can give him the playing time that I want to see out of him. But it's going to be really cool to see Pirlo, the maestro, just work his magic on this man. Uh, another youngin' as well. And if you don't know Wes McKinney at this point, folks, you should. Yeah. Um. He's One, a big, big guy, big name for USA right now. So. Big name for me. He's he's our best player, and that's a hot take. You I can think he is too. You can judge me all you want, but I think he's our best player. He doesn't score goals like Pulisic, and he's not as as uh, quick and as agile as Gio Reyna. But you know, he's he's in the engine room and he's doing his best to 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 help out USA. He's I'm, versatile too. Yeah, he's so versatile. He's a he's an extremely versatile midfielder that can he can be he can be an attacking mid he can be defending mid i can't say the same for our other guys that we just mentioned pulisic and eh, your winger that's it yeah. um we've seen him play mid before but not been successful it hasn't been as successful as when he's on the wing and same with geo i just well we haven't really seen everything that we could see out of geo no, yet no, so, no, so no, not yet there's still time for him to overtake mckinney for me but right now i i'm have to agree it's gonna have to be mckinney right now but but with that being said, McKinney is actually <laughs> – we're going to get into this weird situation right now. So Luis Suarez has been told by Barcelona that he is no longer needed. His services are no longer Whoa. needed there with the new uh, head coach. So – Andrea Pirlo. So Pirlo has now looked into bringing Suarez to Juve. This has been in discussion. His contract has not exactly been terminated by Barcelona at this point. Uh, it was going to be a free move once he actually has his com contract terminated by Barca, and he'd be allowed to move to Juve. Now, at this point in time, another issue that is getting lost in the sauce here, it's causing a lot of rumors and back and forth. Uh, the other rumor is that you're allowed to have so many uh, players on your roster that are not European. Weston McKinney just took up that last spot for Juventus. Ooh. So Suarez would need Italian citizenship. Uh, which he'd have to take a an Italian exam, uh, language exam, which he would then pass, and he'd be allowed to have a passport, and he'd be allowed to play. Um, hmm. So that's another issue that's holding things up. So in the meantime, there's a lot of the other rumors circulating that if this doesn't get done, um, Juve's going to try to bring Moise Keane back. On so they had sold him to Everton. They're going to try to loan him from Everton. Oh, I would love that. I'd love that too. Oh, my God. The other option is Dudu Giroud, which today he said that's 
all the rumors are nonsense. But now Suarez is also saying that there's fake news, but he won't say exactly what the fake news is. Let me know when the Yanks try. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Oh, that should be the name of the uh, transfer window episodes. Let, Let me, me know, know when the Yanks try. <laughs> Let me know when you're on this team. Let me know when you take uh, whatever test you need to take. That's funny. Let me know when you can speak Italian. Yeah. Just, slow, just, just, just slow me know. <laughs> <laughs> or just go get Moise Keem back, Dude, please. that should be the segment. Oh. We'll be like, and another segment of let me know when the ink's dry. <laughs> it's all. It's only after the third team that comes into play is some rumor. Or th- right. When there's that third, you know, third team he's linked to, or maybe you know the third most ridiculous thing you've heard that week about him. That's when that's when Booty starts to lose his mind and starts starts going haywire. It's like, uh, just let me know when it's done. <laughs> all right, I can't keep track of this shit anymore. <laughs> Holy we, shit. We're trying to keep track of this for you folks. We can't even keep yeah, track of this it's shit. it's hard, man. And you know what? <laughs> the media likes to play games or they like to just throw oh. rumors on the wall and see if they stick. Let's pull some up. Yeah, just you can pull them up. While Booty's looking through, <laughs> we're just going to quickly go through some uh, some other, uh, in, not really not important, but just notable transfers. Ivan Rakitic made his move from Barcelona to Sevilla, returning back to the club where he started. James Rodriguez... Is, was bought from Real Madrid going to Everton to play for his old buddy, Carlo Ancelotti, 25 mil move. Fernand Torres made a move from Valencia to Man City for 23 mil. Uh, Danny Ceballos has decided to stay at Arsenal for another year on loan. It seems as if he's committed to the Arsenal project, but he he's keeping his options open so with, say, with Real Madrid being that they are always going to be a Champions League team. Yeah. I think if they can get if Arsenal can get the Champions League this year, he'll stay, stay. he'll sign a deal. Yeah, and, they use him they use him a lot more than Real Madrid yes, use him for they sure. Do. And that's the thing, man. You want to you want to get minutes when you're at his age and uh last I heard he was doing really well for the under 21 Spanish national team. Uh we've also got some lesser name players here, Michi Batshuayi going from Chelsea to Crystal Palace on loan. Gabriel Magalhaes from Lille to Arsenal. We were talking about him earlier. Center back, which will be very, very interesting. Uh, I was talking to Gunnar Mike about this. Mm. David Luiz is Brazilian. Oh, You've yeah. also got Willian, who is Brazilian. Yep. I uh, believe there was another Brazilian on the uh, – Martinelli is Brazilian. Mm-hmm. So they're starting to make themselves a kind of a hub for Brazilian players, which is uh, – which is pretty interesting. If you want to make me a fan of your team, just start <laughs> signing Brazilians. Yep. That's the best way to do it. Um, I could have told you, folks. <laughs> uh, also, another really cool f- uh, transfer that we're looking at, Gonzalo Higuain. Uh, Juventus to Inter-Miami. Is that official? He landed in Miami today. That's See, this is going to be yep. interesting. If, if Higuain does not shit on the MLS League, I am going to judge him... <laughs> severely. I need to see Iguain uh, just whip out his dick and just slap, beat, just slap every MLS team. He's got to just shit on every MLS team. Ibra has set the standard. Joe, Joe, you've been kind of quiet. Joe, do you follow any of the MLS? Do you watch any MLS? Joe, you're on mute. We can't hear you, Joe. I think your microphone's on mute, Joe. Well, while Joe figures out his microphone, Joe, just let us know when you get back into the room. We can see him. We got him on our Google Meet, uh, but we can't hear him at the moment. So we're just gonna we're gonna keep going. Keep rolling. Rodrigo, the striker for Valencia, just signed with Leeds United, which is very exciting. Leeds United just got promoted to the Premier League. That was a thirty mil uh, move. For those who don't know, Marcelo Bielsa is the head coach for Leeds. Got them into the Premier League. This is a very this is Leeds United and Fulham are two new teams in the Premier League. Uh, Booty just found some interesting news. Go ahead, Booty. Uh, just we just found some further evidence. So this is true. No fake news. Iguain is in Inter Mi- is in Miami to sign his contract with Inter. Ooh, 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 we, we have we have physical evidence. We have a picture of him at the airport. Giving a thumbs up, he's so he's ready to do that with a mask. With a mask on, he's wearing his mask. He's baby. wearing his mask. I'm sorry, go on. glad you mentioned Rodrigo. I'm glad you mentioned Leeds United's coach. 
Yeah, that's Marcelo where I was going to go Bielsa. next. He, uh, this is you, what, what do you want to add, man? What do you hot name. Add? Is a hot name. That's all. I was, yeah, that's all I was going to say. Jeez, he's the next coach that's going to go somewhere. Watch. Oh yeah, hundred percent. Yep. He people forget he was like the OG of coaching. Yeah. You talk to Pep. You talk to Cruyff. You talk to like, oh, yeah, uh, no. Pochettino. We've talked about this. Mm-hmm. So it's really cool to see him uh, in the Premier League. I have a feeling Leeds was like, whatever you want to do, do it. Yeah. This is your team now, and yeah. look at them. Yeah. Uh, I'm actually excited. I think they're going to be playing Liverpool uh, like the first game. tomorrow, which is really yeah. exciting because, I mean, this is where you get to puff your chest out a little bit and go, hey, we're here. We're here to stay. Um, who's going home in our spot, you know? Hey, folk around and get a tie. Sheesh. I mean, that's all you can ask for, right? If, right. if something better happens, and don't you look hot. And I'm jumping on the leads, the leads wagon. Yeah, I'm definitely that. gonna be on the leads wagon. That'd be fun. I'm gonna be on the leads. Did you know um, uh, Erlen Holland's dad played for Leeds? Yes. Did you hear what he said? He said that he wants to eventually win the. Well, he had a dream to win the Premier League yeah. with Leeds. Yeah, that was Champions League. Champions Even bigger. League. Champions yeah, League. dude, crazy. I want to win the Champions League with Leeds. Joe, I think I heard you just now. Are you in there? Ah, uh, the mic. The mic. It's kind of keeps cutting out. Keeps cutting out. It looks like the original audio that you were using on your laptop was was working. If you can get back to that channel, that one seems to be live. Thought I heard something there too. We c- it, it's very faint. We can barely hear you right now. It's a little better. It's a little better. So um to keep going here, we got we got a few more transfers to talk about, and then we got some some important dates. Uh, another interesting transfer is Pedro from Chelsea, one of the going. ones that Chelsea's letting go. Yeah, wow, yeah. R- Roma to Roma. He's gonna go fuck around in Italy for a little bit, man. I'm I'm nervous. Yeah, that's he's a good got little player, dude. Take. He's still got something left, man. He he can get into open space, no mm-hmm. problem. Uh, so that's gonna be interesting. Another very cool player that not a lot of people know about, Rainier Jesus, mm-hmm. uh, middle name Carvalho. I see you put that in yeah, there. Thank yeah, you. Appreciate course. that. Uh-huh. Rainier in Brazil, they call him Hainier. The H's, the R's are like H's. On loan from Real to Dortmund. This kid, he's a he's a young stud, a young yep. little buck from Flamengo. Uh, in Real Madrid, have been scarred for life, missing out on Neymar. <laughs> so now any <laughs> hot Brazilian winger, center attacking mid striker. They just go and buy him. Um, and he has not been getting any play time at Real Madrid, so Dortmund have uh, taken him on loan. <laughs> Very excited to see him in the German league. I just imagine Real Madrid just turning on Champions League, seeing, seeing Neymar just going, <laughs> Ah! <laughs> <laughs> oh, turn it off! Oh, turn it off! I can't see it. I can't see it. Who's this oh, one? You got, we got another name here, Mateo Stoppa. Uh, a youngin. I want to say he was a defender or keeper. Um, the name had come up a bunch uh, as far as Juve uh, back in the day. I know it was somebody that I was under the impression they were going to keep him for a minute and possibly, you know, get something out of him. But it looks like they went ahead and got something out of him uh, as far as far as cash goes. Cool. Uh, let me tell you right now. We also have one more while Booty's looking that up. We got one more player to drop. And and folks out there, we we probably missed some, but uh, these are just some some ones that we thought were notable, and we wanted to share with you guys. Last one on the list: Lorenzo Tonelli going from Napoli to Sampdoria as well. Two point seven five. I really like Napoli, man. I mean, not yeah, Napoli. I really like Sampdoria. They uh, they they they're very much like um like a Dortmund or a. Um, like an Atalanta, where they go and buy all these kind of young players, mm-hmm. like one, two, three mil, bring them up to you know a, a really high level of play, and then flip them for like five to ten their their value. Uh, it looks like you just pulled up Matteo Stoppa. Yeah, and, and I stand corrected. He's actually a forward. Um, oh, nice. I I knew I heard the name for some reason. He was actually in uh, Juve's U nineteen uh, system. So he, nineteen years old. Like you said, I mean, Sampdoria goes and finds these guys. And who, who is their coach again? Oh. You had mentioned him a couple episodes ago. Uh, it was – oh, 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 uh, the guy, uh, Lester, um, Ranieri. Mm-hmm. 
Claudio Ranieri, the guy that won the EPO with Lester. Leicester. Yeah. What is it? Lester. 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 I'll never be able to remember that. <laughs> Just like uh, Garage Band and Guitar Hero. Good Garage Band and Guitar Hero. That's I'll right. always mix those up. Well, keep an eye on Sampdoria because they are making moves. Yeah. That's why I threw those two on the list. That's very I interesting. I pre- appreciate that a lot. Yep. That's a really cool one. Absolutely. So coming up, actually, Joe, is there any that we missed that you can think of off the top of your head? Is there any transfers that we missed that you can think of off the top of your head? Any that you uh, are really excited to see in European soccer? I, I don't think so. I think you have all the notable ones here. Um, cool. I cool. wanted to um, mention James, but I think we already talked about him um, from Real Madrid to Everton. Yes, we, we briefly touched on that. That's really exciting. Yeah. Do you think he'll be successful in the EPL? Uh, I, I should think so. Okay. Like, it's more like a smaller club, so uh, that shouldn't put a lot of pressure on him to perform. And then at least reunited with uh, Carlo Ancelotti should at least be something that should uh, bring the best out of him at the moment. I think if he, if he fails, then it means... Um, Rodriguez has not really uh, have a really exciting career as many projected. So I think this might probably be his last chance to at least showcase why um, Zidane was wrong actually putting him on the bench or probably um, he's going to let us know exactly uh, why Zidane actually kept him on the bench if he doesn't perform. Man, I got to be honest. If you look at what Zidane has done with James on the bench, it's hard to say that was a wrong decision, right? Exactly. It's it's true. But then, um, hey, if you go to Everton and then you give, you you put on a good show, people are still going to think, okay, so Zidane, you had Rodriguez. If probably you brought him in, still things would have been better. You know, at least don't don't let uh, let us think about the fact that Zidane made the right decision actually keeping you on the bench. That's if only you don't perform in Everton. Then it means Zidane had everything spot on, you know. But then, hey, you go to Everton, give all your best, you know, play some good football, at least. Give give us something to talk about that probably is that was was wrong in some way, probably. But then, if you don't perform, that's it. Right, and he's he's twenty nine, so he's reaching the end of his career. Uh, I would like to see him in the next World Cup, in the twenty twenty two World Cup, but uh, this is going to be it for him. I think this is his last dance at a yeah. professional club, and he's this is. I mean, this is one of the best stages to do it. This is the the EPL. This is where the most eyes are in, in world soccer. So I think you're right. This is going to be his chance to shine or prove Zidane right. So we'll see. Is Everton finishing ahead of Arsenal? Got a joke. <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> okay. No, okay. All right. All right. Okay. <laughs> that was a I good question. What he's like actually that. trying to do is then um, – He's still trying to get me talk about Arsenal, but then, <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm, honestly, when I was growing up, I've always had a very soft spot for Arsenal. But then, hey, they keep disappointing, man. And I hate the fact that of like they are comparing themselves to AC Milan, man. Ah. It's like we are better yeah. club than Milan. I'm like, what? Yeah, come on. Why would somebody even say something like that? Is it because? Um, now they think they are eighth, and then Milan is eighth too. So at least they can compare themselves to Milan. But then... <laughs> you got to go look at history, though. I mean, when you look at exactly. history, exactly, exactly. But then they'll put things in the right perspective for you. Like, okay, let's just compare things um, in the past decade. Yeah, we're pretty close. <laughs> exactly. So yeah, there's a the reason why I don't. I'm. I'm. I don't know. But then. But then I was being very objective about the Arsenal position. I think I was not being sentimental about that. Um, I still maintain it. 
probably their best for me should be seventh. Anything above that will really be a surprise to me. Okay, you heard it from the man. Yeah, we're gonna we're, we'll put you on the board. You owe us lunch. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we'll we'll eat together. You know, we'll eat yeah. together and on then, uh, um, Skype. Um, <laughs> you, you you talked about Pedro to Roma, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, we did. Yeah. We did. We... Yeah, I really like it when those players start signing for the for the Italian league. When you know the Italian teams are able to bring in such players. Yeah, this mm-hmm. is good for the league. Suarez, Pedro, they have the name. I would agree. I, th- I think so as well. Um, and it, it's really good to see the Italian league get these big names because that'll draw more people to the Italian league, which means more mo- more fans, more money, uh, more competitive, I think. I think the more money you can bring into the Italian league, the more competitive it will be. We're seeing it with the EPL. They've just got boatloads of money over there. So um, we're really seeing them get really competitive players and, and have a competitive league. Moving on. Let's talk about September as a whole. We got some important dates coming up. Wake me up before September ends, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> for those Green Day fans out there. First and foremost, we got La Liga and EPL beginning tomorrow. Ooh. Then on Sunday, we got PSG and Marseille. So that should be really fun. Uh, that's, if I'm not mistaken, that's that's first versus second place from last year. Yep. Yeah. So. First versus second place. Then we got Bundesliga the following weekend on the 18th. That'll kick off. And then the very next day after that on the 19th, we got Serie A. It's going to start back up. Go, Joel! Let's go! And then let's swim back over to the EPL really quick. <laughs> on the 20th, we got Chelsea and Liverpool. So we're going to see if Frankie Fief has got it oh, we're gonna right see off the it. bat. We're going to see it. Second week, week two, Chelsea Liverpool. Mark that one down. It's going to mm. be fun. I'm very aroused. Mm. Super Cup. We have a Super Cup. So we'll see Sevilla. And we will see them go up against our friends, Bayern Munich. I think Bayern Munich will probably smash the piss out of them. But if we'll they see. don't, we'll see. If we'll they see. don't, I'm going to be there to make sure everyone knows. <laughs> Who Sevilla is. Who Sevilla is. Yeah, Damn right. right. Damn right. So that's going to be on the 24th. Mm. Definitely circle your calendars for that one. Yes, sir. Liverpool versus Arsenal. We'll see if Arteta, we'll see if our friend Arsenal is going to live up to the hype that we've been talking this whole episode so Liverpool's got man, Liverpool's got a tough couple first games, man. Jeez, um, right. So I guess we're gonna we're gonna see if Liverpool still got it. And then finally on the thirtieth of September, mark your calendars for Der Classica. Mm. Got Bayern versus Dortmund. That should be a fun one as well. If you guys don't remember, uh that was actually when everything restarted. That's right. During the quarantine. That was our first our first episode during the quarantine where we actually talked live soccer it was the Bayern Dortmund game. So should be a fun one. Hope it's another close one. Hope it's exciting. What are you guys looking forward to seeing the most out of all those, Coach? Definitely the EPL stuff. Uh, I'm really actually excited about Serie A kicking back up just because AC Milan have got some new players, so that's going to be fun. I want to see what they what they do You know, coming off this hot run from last year. Uh, but I really want to see... I want to see the I want Chelsea, man. They got all the signings. I want to see it, man. I want to see, see Chelsea yeah. Liverpool. That's that's for me. Like that's that's the match to see this month. What do you think, Joe? Yeah, I think so. Um, Chelsea Liverpool. Chelsea Liverpool. Um, I think that's the biggest reality in September, in my opinion, as well. Um, all the big names at Chelsea, the new signings. I really want to see them. I really want to see how Lampard will. Just put everybody in the team, but I going to start on a new side and so probably keep some on the bench. I'm really, really um, interested to see how how he's going to put everybody in there. 
Well said. Yeah, I agree. Frankie FIFA. Can't wait. Frankie FIFA. We'll see. I got. You know what? I got to say, I think I'm looking forward most to uh, Der Classica. Really? That was a fun one last time. It was fun. It was good. And I think uh, I think Dortmund is ready to ready to do this finally, but you got to actually do it. Well, they did talking just, about it, but they lost Hakimi. That's true. How, who do you re- how do you replace a player like that? Yeah, man. Bayern did nothing but get better. So, Sheesh. so we'll see. Should be yeah, fun. They're gonna have Coman. I'm well, not Coman. Uh, Sane. No, Sane. No. Yeah. Woo. Oh, God. That's gonna be scary. Oh bro. boy. It's gonna be scary. Well. Well, they lost Cortina, right? Yeah, but was he really? He was not really part of their plans, yeah. man. <laughs> yeah. He was just. He was just chilling. He's just chilling. Do you think we'll see him succeed at Barcelona? <sighs> <laughs> that was a yeah. heavy sigh. Yeah. Because yeah. I really, I really, just like you, you know, I don't know, but then I really love Brazilian players. I really don't want to see Brazilian players just fall off, man. I have a soft spot for them. And it, it looks like we are filled with so much talent, but then... yeah. Sometimes, um, you know, as a cute in them becomes a problem. Like, I don't know, in recent European football, let me put it that way, it seems the Brazilian, most of the Brazilians are struggling a little bit in the modern European football. I don't know if you guys have noticed that. I could see that. Uh, I can tell you, I mean, we saw it in the Champions League final. Neymar kind of disappeared. Um, yeah, I think, I don't know if the kick and run is rather... Is is not helping them. It doesn't bring the best from them because they need time with the ball. They need to exhibit what they they can do with the ball. And I will say, Thiago team, Silva and Marquinhos looked really good in that Champions League game because you know they are defenders and then right. they are not really like the the regular samba boys of Brazil. You know, you look forward to like strikers, the midfielders, the wingers. Brazilians, it looks like apart from Neymar, um, I can't really put a finger on any other Brazilian player that is actually doing well at the moment. But that I was really the think in the early 2000s. Yeah, right. Yeah, it's hard to, yeah, yeah. to to think back to there. Yeah, I think probably the European coaches are are not are not okay with how they are playing. I, I honestly don't know. I say Ali Son, but I mean, if we're talking goalkeeper, field players, yeah. Um, you got, I mean, you got Firmino, you got Gabriel Jesus. Um, yeah, that, but they're not really like you're saying. They're not really like exactly. dominating the yeah. European scene. Yeah, it's just like um, Firmino has been good. Yeah, but yeah. then Jesus, I don't think he's been there. He's been a little bit inconsistent. You know, you know, I'm I'm just trying to compare. Um, yeah. What we saw from Brazilians just in the early 2000s and now, yeah, you can't you can't mention any big team without a good Brazilian player playing week in week out, you know. But now it's, it's everything is changing. It's different. The world is catching now up. Now it looks like they're all struggling. Yeah. Now, apart from Liverpool, you're gonna mention Firmino. I don't think, just like I said, I don't think um, Jesus has been consistent enough. Um, Maybe Willian? Willian from uh, Willian at Chelsea and Arsenal. He's been he's been Willian, pretty consistent. Will, but... Willian, exactly. Willian too has not been really consistent. You know, at a point. Yeah. Right, he's young. He was, he was also doing well with Everton, but then apart from that, it's more like Anthony. But then, just like ten years ago, man, it looks like all the top teams in, in Europe, everybody that one Brazilian that is playing consistently. But yeah. then things are changing. That's you right. Have one that is that is very enthused about Brazilian. I don't know. You should probably see something about this because I don't know. I'm, I'm starting to feel a little bit. I'm a little bit skeptical about Brazilian football. 
Are you? Yeah. I'm, I'm just saying, in my opinion, that's what I'm, I'm feeling at the moment. For me, I mean, you're individually, individually, I would agree that the Brazilians are not where they used to be, but I think you're comparing – you're comparing the the current day Brazilians to the likes of Ronaldo, Ronaldinho, Kaká, and it's like, will we ever see players? Yeah, will we see players better than them? I don't know. Neymar is probably the closest thing, but he has exactly. been at least, um, if not better than them, at least you know, um, before the Ronaldo's, the uh, before Rivaldo's, um, you know, we had. Rivaldo. Roberto, those players, they were still in the mix. You know, yeah, but now Mario. Everywhere is silent for them now. Eh, I wouldn't say silent, but just not at the same level. Not at the same level as dominating. That's what I mean by silent. I'm just trying to yeah. compare themselves with them. I got you. I got you. I got you. <laughs> we, we, we just kind of grew up spoiled, right? Oh, I mean, we did. We did. Yeah, yeah. You know, so we're, we're just used to those old now. Brazilian That's teams right. that – yeah, like you were saying, like both y'all were saying, I mean, if you didn't follow soccer, you at least knew three to four people on the team. Yeah. You know? That's right. So it's hard to go from that to, to now. I mean, yeah. even the last World Cup, uh, I, had, I had some trouble naming some people on those teams. That's right. Um, and Alisson, okay. Uh, Neymar. Coutinho. Coutinho. Uh, Lucas Moura on the bench. I will say Casemiro, for me, has been a shining star for Brazil. Yeah. As of late. Yeah. I should, I should think so in this. And in this. can't forget about the left back. Marcelo. Right? Marcelo, yep. Come on now. Yeah. Yep, he was there. Just saying. Yeah. They're still out there. I mean, yep. still, he, he's, in my opinion, he's the best left back in, in the past decade or so. Oh, yeah. For sure. I, I'm trying to th- – I don't – left back, left back. Yeah. Um, I don't think I can name another left back that's better than Marcelo. In the yeah, last exactly. decade, yeah. See, that's a, and maybe maybe the Brazilians are just they're moving to a different part of the field. It's more of a center back, center defensive mid rather than the the forwards. <laughs> I don't know. I'm just making excuses up right now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Do well, we have any interesting news, Booty? We do. And and to wrap that up, I think Coutinho will do well at Barca. Actually. Oh, hot. Mother Falcon take because because he won't have any other option but to because <laughs> it's gonna you know think about it, it's gonna be interesting if they don't bring anybody else in oh it's him and it's, it's, all, it's, all, him. it's all on you yeah so Woody, what, what do you think they are going to play Coutinho now what's that now say it again um what what do you think um Coutinho is going to play which position do you think he's going to play now man. If they were smart, I think they should do the four three three that they always do, but maybe have him in the, like a false nine kind of role. Oh, have Griezmann. If they're gonna keep putting Griezmann on the wing, mm. I don't understand why. But let's pretend like they're gonna continue to do that. So he'd be on the left, right? And then who'd be on the right? Who you think, bro? Uh, Come on, dude. I'm going blank. Yeah, I'm going blank. Number ten. Not number ten. Oh, that guy. Oh, yeah, that guy. <laughs> Come on, that guy. That's right. The reason this was, uh, I don't know. Probably people think um, it was being played out of position. I don't know, but then. Yeah, so he always yeah. has been. Yeah. Um. To that should be interesting to see, but yeah, you know, I, for a minute I thought Messi was gone because that was our news that yeah. we had. But, yeah, yeah now he's not. So, <laughs> What do you mean, Booty? He's not gone? Well, first he said, you know, now it's should I stay or should I go? And uh, first it was now he's leaving. He threw his hissy fit. and Now he's saying he's not. And pretty much it's because nobody could pay the clause, the raise clause. Which, if we, we got to break this down. Yeah, yeah. Because I've been, I've been following this closely. I've got a friend who is – been trolling me almost every day. It's been a Eddie, if you if you ever actually supported me and listened to the podcast and got this far, you would know that I'm going to give you props here, but you won't. So you'll never hear this. <laughs> <laughs> but he he and I had a bet that Messi would never leave uh, Barcelona, and I said he's definitely leaving. And what wound up happening is Messi wanted to leave, but 
his clause was so expensive that Barcelona said, unless someone pays us 700 million euro, you're not going anywhere. Personally, I think this is a very uh, immature, childish, petty move by Barcelona. His contract, Messi's contract is up next summer. So unless Messi decides to re-sign a contract, he's gone for free. So really, I mean, you'd get something for him. Right. It's a business at the end of the day. You're going to try and rebuild with Messi with a brand new coach, Ronald Koeman, this next year. Messi's mind is, I'm going after this year. I'm going after this year. I'm going after this year. It's already in his mind. He's already made it very well known. He doesn't want to hurt Barcelona, but he just doesn't want to be there anymore. Uh, so I think it's very silly for Barcelona to not try and make a an agreement with Man City, who already went to the media and said, we were going to give him $100 million plus Gabriel Jesus, plus Bernardo Silva, plus a center back. That's arguably... 250 to 300 million dollars worth of players in cash and you're going to turn it down just because you're being petty being you don't greedy. want Messi to win being, they're being greedy yeah, well, cuz they're trying to make up for all all those terrible yeah. signings yeah. that they they've had in right. the past right. let me get my 100 million back for that one for the Griezmann move mm-hmm. let me get my 100 million back for Coutinho let me get my 100 million back for this you're trying to make make up for all these mistakes that you had and then you also want excess cash to go make those mistakes again yeah like just take I agree with you. Like, take what you can get. Take move take on. take the hundred. Take the the players they're offering you. Move those. But they, you know, it's. Uh, I had a friend tell me that he thinks Barcelona don't want to sell him for the two fifty. The lead, you know, the Man City mm-hmm. because this next year they're going to market the shit out of Messi. It's going to be much like the Kobe Bryant last year with the mm-hmm. Lakers. Every game is going to be sold out. Uh, everything he does is going to be heavily marketed. They're going to just sell, 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 sell. Guarantee they make more than 250 mil off of Messi this next year just by it being his farewell tour. Yeah. Because they're not going to keep him. No. He's not, he's not going to stay. You're going to have to bring in, like, Neymar, which you can't do. Um, so, Joe, give us your thoughts. We've been, we've been talking a lot over here. What are your thoughts on the Messi <laughs> Oh, I honestly didn't want to comment about Messi. <laughs> <laughs> you don't want, that's fine. You don't have to if you don't want to. Uh, no, nah, I, I, I don't know why, but then I feel uh, he's done with Barcelona, and then Barcelona should have moved on, just like you were saying. Um, yeah. Probably, I think they should have touched him on him. You know, allow him to go rebuild the team, start a new, you know. I don't think... Um, Messi is part of their problem right now because they are over reliant on him. They depend on, on him so much. You know, let him be. Oh, let the other players, you know, start playing. Let them be born. And let them, let them show, showcase what they can do. You know, with him around, man, he's good. We all know he's, he's the best player in the world currently. Probably, um, that's still going to be the argument of, of him and Ronaldo. But then let's just say um, the, the two are the best in the world. So the best kind in, in La Liga at the moment. But then you need to let him go if he wants to leave. You know, start everything, you know, build a team around somebody else. You know, I don't know. Because... If he was he was um, extraordinary like he used to be, man, I don't think if you have him on, on, on your team and you still want to see like eight goals in a match, man, it's, it's, you should be you should be you should be sorry if you can't do that and you can't avoid him at the moment. Because he's not like he used to be, he's not like Messi of let's say um, four years ago when he can actually do a ten thing to the hell. Now he can't really find too much. That's right. Yeah, it, it, he's thirty-three. He's on the end of his career. I think this is. I think it's it's good for for both Messi and Barcelona to have one final year where they both know he's leaving. Uh, kind of send him off with a lot of respect, give him a lot of awards, let make the fans happy. Um, and then allow them to go their separate ways. You know, I, I think you're you're spot on there, Joe. So, um, 
Now, though, is the next great question. Where does he go? <laughs> we're And we're back. And we're back, right? Where <laughs> does he go? It, I mean, of course, the everyone's first guess is going to be Man City because of Pep. But if I'm Messi... Would he, I want to ask you this. Uh, if you were Messi, where would you have preferred to go? I'd want to go to Syria. I wouldn't want to go to Juve, though. Ooh, hot take. Why not? Um, if I'm a competitor like like Messi is and like Ronaldo is, I don't want you to be on my team. Mm. I always want to go against you. Yeah. Now you know. Nowadays with NBA and things like that, eh, that's that's one another reason I don't. I'm not liking what the NBA is doing. Like, mm, teams I like. Are, yeah, you know, I don't yeah. like the whole like. Ah, uh, well, you know, I can't beat you, so join you. Uh, I'll just join your team. Um. So where where are you going, Messi? You're in Syria. He's got to go to one of the Milan's, right? Yeah, it's the only, let's go. It's one of the. It's the only two that would have the money to do it, and the only two that would have the coaching. I think that he would that he would find fitting for him. Um, the only two that I think he'd be able to compete. Um, you know, Atalanta's obviously not gonna have money to buy him. Somebody like uh, like Roma maybe. But I don't think the coaching or the players would be there for him. I think I don't think that'd be a top choice for him. But he's got to be in a Champions League team. So that's yep. I think first first priority. If you're not in Champions League, I'm not joining your team. Yeah. So Milan have got to get to Champions League next season because the the rumors I heard a long time ago, Joe, about AC Milan is that, and we've talked about this, the the yeah. owner of Louis Vuitton will buy AC Milan, and then go and get Pep and Messi and completely transform the club and bring them back to the top. It's a it's a rumor. It's a hot take. That would be an ideal situation. <laughs> Why not? Um, you know, if it comes around, things would need to change. Oh and yeah. Change a whole lot, you know. Yeah, he that's a good point. A I don't think he has to. Um, he can, he's going to be able to work with the materials we have at the moment. Not Kaka, not not probably. Kessie is good, but then not a good passer of the ball like like Pep kind of passer. I don't know. If Interesting. You know what you mean yeah, we are very good, but then we are not really up to Pep standard. You need to change everything, quantity, and so yeah, Calabria, all those players would need to leave. Probably you need as expensive players too. And then Milan don't still don't have the money yet. Nobody yeah. is coming on that. Right. So I, I still right. don't think he's going to be able to work with Milan. Man, Where I do you think, think Messi goes? Purely he's doing that at Milan at the moment. Purely the players. I think he's going to do good. Yeah. Where do you think Messi will go? If I was him, honestly. Yeah, if I you were him, you're Messi. To, I would have loved to play for Juventus, honestly. Because you'd be playing next to Ronaldo? Football is guaranteed. You are guaranteed to see your out title. Man, you add more laurels to what you already have. You know, choose the easy spot. If you play for Juventus, man, you're going to score more goals against so many clubs in Serie A. You know, you have a class. You have a class of goals. Now you're playing with Ronaldo. So the competition is just going to be in the team. You know, I I don't know, but then I really want to see the two together play. Me too. Me too. So I would prefer to be in the Serie A because Serie A doesn't really involve too much running like the other leagues. So, at least he can be able to play in Tia. Because right now he doesn't have that energy to do so much running up and down the field. Man. And then if you play for a team like Juventus, at least you know your, your two goals are guaranteed against almost all the clubs in Italy. That's true. 
I, I like your point that you said about the uh, the lack of running. I think the Serie A, it's not just the lack of running. It just that league overall is is easier for older players to retire in. Yeah. They have a, a, a very slow tempo, so it was very yeah. good for the old players to actually still enjoy the league. If you yeah, have yeah. playing, still playing at 38, man, that's going to motivate me if I was messy. Okay, yep. so you guys actually scoring week in, week out. Well, now, I'm doing this at six o'clock. I'm just already scoring. Man, I'm just 34, man. And I'm still young. Yeah. Yeah, it definitely extends the career of a player. We, I mean, we, we saw it in the past. All the old players used to go to AC Milan and Inter, and I think they're starting to get back to that same kind of mentality. Maybe not AC Milan. AC Milan's going more of a younger player model. But uh, Inter, I mean, we're seeing, uh, who is it, uh, Vidal wanting to be signed at Inter. We're seeing um, Nangalon. We're seeing Victor Moses, Ashley Young. We're seeing all these old players back in the Serie A. So, yeah. You won't hear much complaining if that happens, by the way. If you, in, if you, <laughs> yeah, you won't right. hear any complaints from me. I'm no, just, you know, yeah. just saying. If you're messy, you wouldn't go to Juve. I, I wouldn't, but, yeah. you know. That's fair. That's fair. I'd want to I'd wanna do my own thing. Yeah. But, because, you know, if not, then it's always going to be like, oh, you just you just went there because cause you're admitting that Ronaldo's doing better right now. Mm. or. They're always going to be in each other's shadows, so you might as well keep yeah, separate. Yeah, that's right. The Ballon d'Or, right? You can't go to two players. It's got to yeah. go to one. If they're all on the same team, I don't see both of them having such a great year that they're both up for it. Right. I mean, that had to be phenomenal. One of the greatest seasons of all time. Yeah. But anyway. Yeah. You want to close it out? Yeah, let's close another it Another beautiful out. one? Another beautiful one. Time to give a shout-out. Shout-out time. I got a really good shout-out. Shout-out your shit. You want to go first? Yeah. So, for those who don't know, I'm sure you do, especially if you're an American. Today is 9-11, September 11th. It's the 19th anniversary of the 9-11 attacks. So, my shout-out will be to all of the policemen, firemen, the families that had to endure a lost, a loved one. Um, never forget, you know, this was a, uh, a really big day in American history. It brought us, a lot of us together. I'm not going to go into the conspiracy theory about this just because I feel like that takes away from all the people that sacrificed their lives or, you know, we're just in an unfortunate situation being stuck in that building. Um, so I just want to give some respect to those families and the uh, firefighters and policemen that that lost their lives trying to save save some people from a horrific terrorist attack. Nice. I like that one. I actually forgot it was September 11th today. Yeah, man. And then once I found out, I threw on the Clint Dempsey jersey. Ghana Joe knows all about Clint Dempsey, I'm sure, <laughs> uh, from those uh, USA Ghana games. That's right, man. Um, but Ghana Joe, who's your shout out, my friend? Yeah. Hey, let's go. <laughs> let's go. I like that, man. <laughs> That's a good one. A very good season. Then I want to know my friends, Robbie and the neighborhood family, Delkey, Hartman, Blanche, Ben, everybody that is around me. If you you guys are really being supported. That's awesome. Yeah. It's good. No problem, man. Yeah, man. Appreciate but that. Still the big shout outs. Still good to you, Damn. Appreciate you, Joe. <laughs> Appreciate you, man. Thank you for keeping me sane. Having someone to talk to during these pandemic times, man. I don't know if you appreciate talking to me, but I definitely I, I, appreciate, I really appreciate it. You know? and, Dude. And I'm kind of used to seeing your notifications lately. I'm <laughs> man. Pick up my phone anytime I have, I have something about AC that I want to share with you, but, man, you. You yeah, always, dude. Uh, same way. Same way. At least I know I, know I can. I can. I can actually um, give you my thoughts about the club, and then um, at least think out loud uh, 
to you as well. So you're going to be supporting us all. <laughs> awesome. Love you, bro. Booty, who's yes, your shout out? It's a lady. We're going to give a lady a shout out today. <laughs> These are great. It's an interesting <laughs> one. Her name is, for, for y'all that uh, follow Lady Soccer, or NSL, or anything of that nature, I don't know if you heard of this lady. Oh, yeah. yeah. Yuki Nagasato. She will become the first woman ever to play for a men's side. Uh, she is a Japan World Cup winner. Let's not talk about that. It's mm. when they beat us. Um, she's joining the Japanese side on a loan deal from the Chicago Red Stars. So she's she's been in the NSL a couple years now. Um, and she's going to go back and, and play for a man's side, the men's side. Uh, I'm going to try to not butcher this. Hayabu- Hayabusa 11 is the name of it. Hayabusa 11. Okay. So she'll be joining these guys. So I, I'm, I'm going to keep an eye on that. It's be pretty fun. Yeah. Um, I didn't think they allowed that in Japan. That's not a joke. Hmm. Cool. Um, That's a good so shout yeah. out, man. Yeah. So let's let's keep an eye on her. Maybe make her the mascot. <laughs> <laughs> so great little shout out to you uh, to end the episode. About that time for the public service announcement. About that time. If you don't follow us on Patreon, Facebook, Insta, Twitter for the twatters, you should. We're at Footy Fetish Show. Nova Acai. It's great dessert. You could do other things with it. Breakfast bowl. We won't ask you what you do with it. It's up mm. to you after you buy some from this gentleman. Hey, hey. Ho. You can make places cold that were always hot. Anyway, <laughs> thank you to our soldiers out there at the Footy Fetish Army for holding it down for us. Keep spreading the word of the balls and the feet. Gospel according to Footy Fetish. This has been the Footy Fetish Show, where the fetish is real and the footy is soccer. Thank you, Joe. Thank you, Joe. Thank you, thank you, buddy. I really appreciate you guys, honestly.